Hello and welcome to another episode of AYF in Worship. In this episode, we focus on thanksgiving because we serve a good and gracious God. We will read Psalm 136, Psalm 136 from verses 1 to 7. All give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. All give thanks to the God of gods. For his mercy endures forever. All give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his mercy endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. For his mercy endures forever. To him who by wisdom made the heavens. For his mercy to him who laid out the earth above the waters. For his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights. For his mercy endures forever. Indeed, we praise this God whose mercy endures forever. He is merciful in the big and small things. I recall as a young doctor working in a labor ward in a district hospital, and a mother had been in labor for a long time, and she had pushed and pushed and was tired. So at the time, what we could have done was use a tool called a vacuum extractor to help pull out the baby, but it wasn't working. And it was too late to take her to theater to do a cesarean section and get the baby out. So what I decided to do was go to the head of the bed, and I held her face in my hands and prayed over her. And then I said, I want you to give one last push, because the baby was nearly coming out. As we say in obstetrics, the head was about to crown. And the lady dug, I don't know where she got the energy from, she dug very deep and pushed, and the baby was delivered. Amen. And we're all very happy in the labor ward. And then silly bachelor me looked at her and said, I'm so sorry for all the pain you went through. <laughs> and she looked up at me with a puzzled look on her face and asked me, what pain? <laughs> John 16:21. for a woman is in pain when she is in labor. But afterwards, the anguish is forgotten because of the joy of bringing a child into the world. And I still see her face holding her baby on her chest with that, that only that marvel and wonder and love a mother can give a baby. Amen. I can speak of that pain theoretically as a doctor. But Rose, you're a mother. Yeah. And you have been through this experience four times. Talk to us about it. Talk of labor pain. <laughs> when I had my first baby, I thought that, you know, I had a lot of energy during the pregnancy. So I thought... I would be able to push all through with all the energy. You show up there like a Hebrew, what, Hebrew women. Eh? Mm. I had read about them, so I said, uh uh, it's time. After so while preparing eh, for labor, mm. I told my husband to go and buy for me what that radio and get gospel music. It was also cut, just selected according this one after this one. I thought the baby would come. <laughs> With this worship session, eh? <laughs> I was going to wow. deliver a worshiper. So when we reached this hospital, uh, Paragon Hospital, then the nurses asked, hey, what is this radio for? <laughs> because I was there with my husband, he also didn't know what the package <laughs> of delivery, of labor meant. So he brought the radio, he said, what is the radio? They put it there, set it, where is the music? And the nurse said, what is this? Said, uh, that is a uh, radio for music, eh? worship music while I'm going to <laughs> deliver and eh, so the baby should come with this music session. The nurses, I saw them laughing. I didn't, I said, mm, maybe, I, I normally see people laughing when you talk and I said, mm, it's one of those, <laughs> one of those days. Ha! Ah. So I saw them, they kept on coming in the room, increasing the music. No, they reduced, said, ah, we are not hearing the music in the next room. So can we increase it? I said, yeah, it's okay. So they would increase. Little did I know, they were gauging the labor pains in relation to the level of the music. 
Now the time of uh, the real labor setting in, eh? I did not want any noise. The pain was like, I could remember it was high above me like this, a straight line, eh? Then when he switched on, they asked, can we increase? I said, switch it off. <laughs> now the nurse said, uh-huh, now is the time. <laughs> now, I was beyond consolation, eh? When my husband said, ah, Rose, uh, I said, Shh, your voice is irritating me. Keep quiet. <laughs> Ash, I will never forget that day. And then when it intensified, they started testing, looking for the heartbeat, eh? And it was starting to disappear. I'm telling you, I was rushed in the theater, and the baby was got out. Yeah, the heartbeat was actually getting, disappearing. Within 15 minutes, the baby was delivered, and they said if they had delayed, it was only the mercies of God that I was able to have that baby. And the Bible says in Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength. Hadn't it been for the Lord, our ever-present help in times of trouble, you know, I don't know whether I would have beheld the beauty of that baby. Mm -hmm. So in Lugisu we say, Papa Wefe, we mungati, ngawamu iwere, sahasa nata awe. He never fails. Yeah. He never fails. Not so? Sure. And then again, I'm assured by this scripture, in the same scripture again, same Psalm 46, verse 11 says, the Lord Almighty is with us. You get it? Muruganda, it really brings it out nicely. Katonda, Ainza, Biona. When I'm in trouble, I say, God, you are God, Almighty. Ainza, Biona. What about this situation? I don't know what you're going through, Uganda. I don't know whatever situation. Is it sickness? Is it trouble in your home? Is it darkness in your home? Is it your career coming to an end? Just know that our God is able, is our refuge. Kawamui wele, Zahasi Hanatao. Nothing is impossible with him.
Indeed, we serve a living God. Yes. We serve a merciful God Amen. that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I am, yeah, I, uh, I remember growing up mostly, I grew up in a born again family, saved family, but on my journey, I started going astray from, from God's will. Yeah. And uh, I remember I held my first cigarette in P7. That's when I started smoking. Then it went on up to university. I was in over five schools being expelled from every school because mm -hmm. of drinking and alcohol. But I thank God that at university, that's when he called me. Mm -hmm. That's who in the bar. I remember, I'll never forget that Tuesday because I had, uh, I joined, I did drama studies, uh, but I had a dead semester due to tuition, so I had to switch to evening. And um, so I'll drink after, after classes to morning, then I have to sleep the whole day, wake up, go to class, that was my routine. Mm -hmm. Wake up in the morning, go, uh, uh, sleep the whole day, then in the evening I go drink, then come back in the morning and sleep the whole day. But I'll never forget this Tuesday, the, I was in the bar, I was with my boys, I was with my boys and were all drinking on the table, I bought my packet of cigarettes, my beer there, but I've never tasted a bitter beer like that one. I've never tasted, uh, I've never tasted, uh, that smoke for that cigarette was not the best that day. Mm -hmm. So the voice inside me called, called me, uh, the voice, the Holy Spirit inside me called me. I was like, Isaac, you're in a wrong place. Mm -hmm. I tried to shut him up. But you know, he's a gentle, he's so gentle. He kept on, Isaac, you're in a wrong place. Mm -hmm. yeah. I told my boys, you know what? Let me come back. Mm -hmm. I went out as if I was going to the toilet. I went around. I jumped on a border border to my hostel. I thank God. I thank God that bought me from that from the bar. Mm, me who used to drive drunk from from my from my university in Mukono mm. to Nkozi, mm. drunk just wow. to go and drink. Mm. I thank God mm. that He protected me. Mm. I have a reason to praise the Lord. Amen. I have a reason to praise the Lord. Amen. No matter situation that you're going through. God is there. Amen. Just open up to him. He, his arms are open to welcome you. Amen. Just welcome God into your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I cannot, I cannot give myself to sin is a song that was written by my young Okid brother, Grace Mugawera, the late. Grace was not just a brother to me, we were soulmates. I was his best man at their wedding. And uh, I remember when he was going to work in Karamoja, our mother asked him not to. And he said, you know, people can die anywhere. Even if one is in a first class hospital, they can die. And even if I'm in the most comfortable vehicle, it could have an accident and I could go. And so he said, I must go to Karamoja. And he did his work there. And uh, when he finished his work, he had been admitted to go to do his uh, master's in uh, agriculture, in uh, seed technology in the UK. And uh, he went to pick up his property uh, in preparation to go. And indeed, he was preparing to go. On his way to Kotido in northeastern Uganda, he was ambushed. And he was shot in the back and the back of the head. And he died instantly. He was shot by Karamojong warriors or robbers. And uh, when I think about his life, I cannot give myself to sin because the quality of life he lived spoke volumes. He chose to live right. I cannot give myself to sin. It's a song that has touched many lives and I choose not to give myself to sin, not because of grace, but because of the grace of God that saved me and changed me when I think of the pain when I think of the shame, when I think of the agony he went through, I cannot give myself to sin. God bless you as you think through your life, as you think about these words in the song. I cannot give myself to sin. God bless you. I cannot. I cannot give myself to sin When I know the agony you went through I cannot give myself to sin when I know the agony you went through That I might be forgiven all of my sin I cannot give myself to sin When I know the pain when I the pain you went through I cannot give myself to sin no. When I know the pain The pain you went through But I might be forgiven all of my sin Jesus 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 I thank you for your love for me
from all the testimonies from the time uh, Dr. Andrew was in hospital and helping this mother give birth and a prolonged labor. But God knew that lady and he communicated through her doctor that hold her and pray. And in that prayer, the Holy Spirit empowered this lady to give it a shot and lo and behold, the baby was out. Mm. And it cut off the pain history. Mm. That is God. Mm. Those who have been in the labor will testify. Mm. And uh, just remembering Grace Mugobera. Going, was leaving to the UK to the University of Edinburgh to go and do his master's. And he was a brilliant man, a very brilliant man. Some of those early scientists, really. And then after all the ministry he had done for the Lord and with one bullet his life is taken you, you look and you're like but sincerely Lord where do we look when we need help where do we look when we need help and each of us has had those moments whereby you have so much reason to give thanks to God but there's also a tight corner in which you are and we are Christians one of the, I got saved in 1995. So, two years from today, I'm thinking of, of celebrating three decades of working with the Lord. Amen. Hey, but in these three decades of working with the Lord, I've had a lot of highs and lows. lows. One of those lows happened when my husband went to study in Hong Kong in 2018. He went to do his master's and he was on a scholarship but badly calculated. So, he gets into Hong Kong and he has less than half the money he needs to survive on. And he wasn't on a government job that he had left us with a salary. There was no salary here. I didn't have a job. And he was out of the country for a year. <coughs> and in, my, in our house, we, I had three, four biological children. And I had four adults. And we needed food for three, at least three meals a day. Breakfast, lunch, and supper. 
we had bills to pay our car water mm. charcoal gas and i had to take children to school so i needed fuel for the car actually in that, in that year i even got an accident mm, sorry and insurance took long to actually compensate us mm. so the struggles were real and may the following year 2019 he returns he returns he's broke and also the family is broke you know you come back to people well, let me go back to Uganda and eat some matoki. And you come back here, and the people are also broke. Mm. So one time I was sharing one of the wife members. Thank God for fellowship. Hello. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I was just sharing, sharing what you're going through. And this girl just said, no, no, you can't be like that. Let me send you money. She sent me 300K and said, make sure you buy oil, rice, beans, posh or soap. Make sure you're stocked up. Mm. And she seated right here, actually. Mm. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, that money carried us a bit. Really, it bridged the gap. It bridged the gap, you know? And uh, that season passed. And then come September, you know, we had been married that time about 16, 16 years, coming to 17 years. And we didn't have a home in Kampala. And the enemy was using it in my life against me. Where is where is your God, you know? When the devil really, really pokes you, mm, where is your God? And he can't do this. Mm? And uh, in those moments, I realized the enemy was really playing hard on my psychology. So I made, I went to God. And I told God, I'm taking off the prayer request for a house. I'm removing it on the list. You know, like you can have your list with 10 items. Mm. I went and scraped off that particular one of a home. Mm. Then I went back to the devil and told him, of course, <coughs> no, you can't hurt me anymore. Mm. The house is off. I'll bring it back on the list two years from now. Like, you know when you look at your circumstances, and surely that was in the year we were going to get a house. Mm. You, we had so many debts. We had debts. Mm. He had debts. He also found us with debts. Mm. And they took long to return him to the job. So it was tough. But I told that devil, you know, I don't care now. For me, I'll bring back the prayer request of a house in 2021. Mm -hmm. So now I'm safe. I, I mean, whether the devil would speak what for me, I was like, but it's off the prayer, prayer list, so you can't taunt me about a house. And I'm saying that particularly because the Bible says in, um, in Proverbs, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Now, for me, in that season, I was leaning on my understanding. understanding. Mm -hmm. You know when you do the mathematics? Well, you can't even go to your husband and say, now you won't pay a million ton. Also, it was really stupid in that season. That was my own understanding. So in September, I took off the prayer request. <coughs> but in October, I had this thirst. I had a lot of thirst, physical thirst and spiritual thirst. And for me, when I experienced such a season, I know it's time to pray and fast. Mm -hmm. So 2019, October, now that the house is off the list, I just wanted to go before God to get closer to him and just enjoy him. And that's what I did. So I went to, I wasn't praying for anything specifically. I just wanted a deep relationship with God. And for getting it, I really got it. That's October. So I start at the beginning of October. Let me tell you, we had been trying to sell land in one of the suburbs of Kampala. And for four years, we hadn't found a buyer. Mm. But the moment I began that prayer and fasting season, a buyer came mm. and off we wanted 300 million but Lisi gave us 240 million mm. now cash in cash 240 million is more import is, is is more valuable than 300 million you're looking for which is not yet on paper mm. so we we agreed and sold the land so now we had 240 million and we had seen a house in Intinda where my husband was in Hong Kong, and I showed him the house. We had met the owners. Me, I didn't want us to buy the house because the house was 400 million. Me, I just wanted a quarter of that to go and build somewhere. We had land after Nangabo. Mm. And for me, it was okay to drive out of town. My husband doesn't like driving out of town. But we had seen this house, ha, and the owner of the house asked us, why do you like the house? I'd grown up in big American homes with big windows. So I told him, the bedrooms are big, I have many children, I think it would work for us. So it's a really an ideal house for me. And the woman said, God will give you money and you buy it. And I went home saying, 400 million, I don't want. Like, you know, you really trust in the Lord with all your heart and not on your understanding. I still go back to my understanding. So now we've sold this land and I'm like, I wish my husband would think about 
we have we, we belong to a church which has a, a good circle, a very vibrant circle. So I was like, I wish you could take the 200 million to the circle. They can give us money to buy this house, and then we pay a mortgage. <coughs> but I, sometimes when you advise men, when they are in their thought process, you actually confuse them. You're better off keeping quiet and trusting the Lord. That particular time, I chose to keep quiet. Two days later, he came to me and said, I've taken the money to the circle. We're actually buying the house in Intind. And I'm like, mm, OK. God works in mysterious ways, OK? So we, anyway, we, the valuation was done. The next month, we, October, is when we sold the land. November, the owner of the house traveled from Sweden, came, and on the 14th November, we actually stood in the house, and she gave us the keys. But we took on a mortgage and we're paying a huge amount because we chose 48 months, so our mortgage yeah. instrument was huge. We didn't know COVID was coming. Hello? <laughs> 2020, COVID hits. The lady couldn't have traveled if we had found the money in COVID time. But God enabled us to continue paying that mortgage. We didn't default all through COVID, COVID one and COVID two. Amen. <clears throat> and we were going to finish that mortgage like next year somewhere because it was a 48 month mortgage. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to testify and give thanks to God that there's where you stop. Now where we stop is where God starts. Mm -hmm. This year has been particularly difficult in paying that mortgage. We have kids four of them, their school fees bill is about 10 million a term. You have other costs, running their cars, every other thing we eat every day. And from January to September, we've struggled, to August, we've struggled to pay our monthly installment. And I've been turning to God and telling him, Naimu come, okay, where are you? Where are you? But I would go and call on his name. I remember in May, we sat in the home, May, and read the whole New Testament with my kids. And every time we would read miracles, I would remind God, you see that miracle you did it, you still have power. You see that miracle we finished May, and the whole New Testament with all my kids? And still, I was just hoping on to the Lord. So this week, we went to, we had a barrier at home. I lost my auntie, the last surviving adult among my dad's generation. And when we came back yesterday, my husband dropped us home and went to work. An hour later, I received a message from him, and he just said, stop everything you're doing and give thanks to God. We have cleared the entire mortgage. What? <laughs> my goodness. Praise the Lord. Abu Luganda, I just began crying. I failed to say, <laughs> I began crying, and my daughter came and looked at my phone to be sure, why is she now crying? We've, we're just from a barrio, now what more problems? And then she, I show her the message. And yesterday, we completed that mortgage in less time than we had asked to pay it. In a year where we have had a tough financial situation, surely when I look to the hills, when I look for help, our help comes from the Lord. You remember I testified in AY Fellowship that really the work my husband does, eh, it's very, he could earn whatever he wants to earn. He could even steal, but he's a person who made up his mind not to steal. So he's not nice to work with if you would prefer that he helps you get in Jauru. So because of that, sometimes his money is held or cut, and then he doesn't even complain he just goes to god and as a wife sometimes i almost want to jump in and say but then the holy spirit always grabs me and says keep quiet keep quiet and i've seen god take away this mortgage just like that my help comes from the lord he is taken away that he has he has taken it you can Why, see it can on my face song i'm thinking about when i look to the hills mm. uh, when i look for help i know my help come from you Lord it does when I look to the hills when I look for help I know my help will come from you for there is no 
the God in the heavens or the earth who is so close to me and loving as you. So dark, so dark. I will not be afraid. I will be For you proved to be the lift of my head, changing times of tears to times of praise. shall lift up our voices to you in praise because of your great mercies, because of your great love. How wonderful, how merciful, how great are the things that you do. All the marvels of your work, Lord God. How great giving the Biamukamas the grace to do the things that they have done to be able to complete a mortgage even before the set time. Surely, Lord God, unto you be all glory and honor. King of kings, you that saved Isaac from the pits of hell when he was descended into a degenerate life, but you restored him, gave him purpose, and have blessed him with a great life unto you be all glory and honor. King of kings, you do great and mighty things, and we long to see you one day, Lord. We want to see you, King of kings, face to face, and we see the one who shed his blood for us, the one who did great and mighty things for us. Indeed, Lord, we want to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I look forward to that day. I look forward to that day. You know, God has blessed us and given us amazing things in this life. But the Bible tells us that even a hundred times, a hundredfold in this world, but even in the world to come, that is what he has in store for us. And I look forward to that day. I want to see those that have gone before us. You know, I, have, I had a wonderful great friend called Andrew Katarieva. And in my mind, I just, you know, there are times I really miss him and wonder where where he is. I mean, how it would be if he were around. And I want to see him. I want to see him. I want to see my father who, who went to, to be with, with, with him last year, you know, 
to see Grace Mugobera who wrote these beautiful songs. It is a good thing to know who God is. You know those one, you, it, it fills me with so much, um, what is it, that anticipation, that, that longing to see him. That time when we shall all burst into joy and all our problems shall be dropped to the ground. You know, many of we have, much as we have seen his blessings, but also we have felt his pain. We have felt pain sometimes, but on that day we shall let go of all that pain and see the one who has called us heavenward. I long for that day. And there is a word for that joy in Allure, and it, that word is Anyonga. Anyonga. May you be blessed as you listen to this wonderful song. We recorded this song when we went to visit Uncle Ben at, at, at their, Uncle Ben and Auntie Joy at their home uh, in Wachiso. May you be I blessed as we celebrate, as we look forward to the day we shall meet him. God bless you. Amen. I see the time is for spent and the day of his coming is drawing near.
Dear viewer, thank you for watching this episode of AYF in on Family TV, family friendly content. Thank you for walking the journey from pain to joy with us. This is the Jesus we speak about, the Jesus who took grace, the Jesus who's taken our loved ones and who's coming back one day. Will you be ready when Jesus comes? We look forward to the day when we'll be caught up in the sky with him and we shall see him face to face and he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Until next time, thank you for watching. God bless you. <laughs>